But as we welcome new members into the congregation, it seems fitting today that we're in the book of 1 Corinthians. It seems fitting because as we discussed last week, the Apostle Paul wrote this letter to a church he had planted, to a church that was full of division and disagreement. And in those days, when Paul had planted this church, there weren't other churches in town. And so when you had a disagreement with your church, you couldn't leave your church and go down the road to the beginning where Harvest Baptist, you had only one option for church. So you were either a part of the church or you weren't a part of the church. There weren't all these multiple denominations, and so it's with that context that the sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, agree with each other, and don't be divided into rival groups. Instead, be restored with the same mind and same purpose. My brothers and sisters, Chloe's people gave me some information about you, that you were fighting with each other. What I mean is this, that each one of you say, I belong to Paul. I belong to Apollos. I belong to Cephas. I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in Paul's name? Thank God that I didn't baptize any of you, except Crispus and Gaius, so that nobody can say that you were baptized in my name. Oh, I baptized the house of Stephanus too. Otherwise, I don't, I don't know if I baptized anyone else. Christ didn't send me to baptize, but to preach the good news. And Christ didn't send me to preach the good news with better words, so that Christ's cross won't be empty of its meaning. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pastoral transitions are a normal part of the church life. If you've been around this church for a while, you know that we recently went through a pastoral transition. I came across an article this past week that said that most pastors only stay at a church for three to seven years. In this church, I know Pastor Jeff, when he was here, he had stayed here for 14 years, which is twice as long as most pastors stay at a church. And I can tell you that he loves this church. I've talked to him, and I know that he would have stayed here even longer. It speaks to the health of this church that he stayed so long. But pastoral transitions are a normal part of the church life. The Apostle Paul here, he had been with the church in Corinth for 18 months. And if you're wondering how I know this, we read about this in Acts chapter 18, verse 11, where it says, so Paul stayed in Corinth for a year and a half, teaching them the word of God. It's with this context that we read this letter. Paul is writing to the church he had planted, a place where he lived and taught for almost 18 months. And over the years, they had a couple of different leadership changes. And now it's been reported to Paul from Chloe's people. I always find that line kind of funny. From Chloe's people, they're reporting that people are saying, I belong to Paul, I belong to Apollos, I belong to Cephas, I belong to Christ. They're all taking sides. They're picking their favorite leader and saying, I belong to this one or that one. They're showing loyalty and allegiance to their leader of choice. It would be like if we said, I belong to Pastor Jeff, or I belong to Pastor Tim, or I belong to Pastor Ralph, or Pastor Olivia, or Pastor Janae. But I think you all know better here. I think you know better that you don't belong to me, you belong to Christ. And it was funny, I was reading this article about how pastor, most pastors stay at a church for three to seven years, and the very next day, one of my mentors, who's a pastor back in Oregon, she announced that she was leaving her church. And this announcement, it kind of shocked me, because she was the kind of person who I thought would be at her church forever. I thought she was going to retire there. She did so much for that church. And I never thought I would see the day where she would leave, but she was being obedient to God's call on her life to go somewhere else. But in these transitions, it can be difficult. It can be hard to say goodbye. We like for things to stay the same. We like for things to stay the way they've always been done. Transitions can be scary. When my mentor back in Oregon announced that she was leaving her church, I must confess that some of my first Thoughts and reactions where that church is going to fall apart without her. How are they going to survive without her? She does so much. She's the bones of that organization. She's not the lead pastor, but she's the executive pastor. Who's going to fill 
those shoes? Who's going to run the staff meetings? How are they going to function? Who's going to develop the upcoming leaders? Who's going to oversee all the various ministries? How will they survive this change? I imagine some of you may have had similar thoughts when Pastor Jeff stood up here and announced that he was moving on to another church. How are we going to survive this? Who's going to do the preaching? Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? And I know there were a lot of different Task, something even as simple as there was an abandoned car in the parking lot, who's going to deal with those type of things? I remember when I announced that I was leaving my church in Oregon, there were some jobs that dropped to the ground. There were people who were asking, who's going to do your job when you're leaving? Who's going to do this and that? There was this fear of who were they going to hire to replace me because they were worried about all of these responsibilities. Is it all going to crumble and fall to pieces when I'm gone, and I think leadership changes are always scary like that. Who's going to fill in? Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? There's so many things about the future that we don't know until we get there. Will this church survive a pastoral transition? And I think that's the danger of Christian leadership, is we forget who our leader is. We forget that we don't belong to a leader. We belong to Christ. Pastor Jeff was not the ultimate leader of this church. The church board is not the ultimate leader of this church. I am not now the ultimate leader of this church. Christ is the one who leads us. Christ is the leader of this church. And when we forget that, that means we've gone the wrong way. You don't belong to a pastor. You belong to Christ. And I want to say here that I don't plan on going anywhere that's not where the sermon is going. I just started here. I'm just getting started. But... But I do want to say that if I were to disappear tomorrow, this church wouldn't crumble and fall. We've seen how the church board came together, how they held things together. People did this and people did that. And there were some things that didn't get done, but maybe those things aren't the things that ultimately matter. And so I love how the Apostle Paul puts it. He uses some strong words and maybe a bit of sarcasm in this passage. He says, has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you, or were you baptized in Paul's name? Thank God I didn't baptize any of you, he says. In other words, your pastor, your leader, your mentor, they were not crucified for you. I was not crucified for you. Leaders come and leaders go, but our God remains forever. God is faithful. And we remember that God was faithful in our past, so we can trust God to be faithful in the future, even in unknown future, we can trust God to be faithful. And so I found it kind of ironic that this is the passage I'm preaching on today, the passage from Membership Sunday. I didn't choose this passage today. The passage kind of chose me because I follow a Bible reading plan. And so these passages were chosen for me. But I found it kind of ironic that this is the passage that was here for Membership Sunday. This is the Sunday where we celebrate formal church membership. We have two new members of our congregation. And I always want to stress when we talk about formal church membership, that you don't have to become a formal member of the church to belong to our family, to belong to this church. Church membership is not for everyone, but we do have formal church membership here. And this is how we as a church structure, we have structure and organization. This is how we elect board members and church leadership. We'll be having an annual meeting in two weeks, and so we'll see sort of some of those functions of what it means to be a church member. But I was thinking about church membership in our denomination as I was reading this passage. One of the ways the church in America is divided is by all these different denominational lines, all these different churches. And there's so many different denominations in the United States, and there's so many different denominations even in Canastota, as small as it is, there are a lot of churches. I was surprised by how many churches are in Canastota, and I don't want to ever discount or put down someone else because they believe another way, or they're a part of a different church or denomination. And so Paul, he's teaching us here that we all belong to Christ. It doesn't matter what church or denomination you are a part of. If you are a part of a Christian church, you are a part of the family of God. But I still think that denominations are important. The local church here is important. I think denominations offer accountability. 
We can't just say whatever we want. I can't just make up my own beliefs and present them to you because I would get in trouble. There's accountability. When I become a pastor, I have to go through a licensing process. There's accountability with what I say and with what we believe. The denomination is a lot like a local church on a larger scale. And so the people around us, they offer us accountability. The people sitting in your pews, when you're a part of a local church, they offer you accountability. They help you and encourage you to grow in your relationship with Christ. And one of the things I love about the local church is that it brings together people that you wouldn't normally otherwise hang out with, people who you wouldn't maybe normally become friends with in the schoolyard. The church brings together the young and the old, the rich and the poor, the educated and uneducated. We are all together, one in Christ. There is no hierarchy of who is more important in the church. It brings together people from different races. It brings together people from different political backgrounds, different generations, different socioeconomic statuses. The Spirit of God brings together a diverse group of people and calls them family. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. And I think that's beautiful that the church is a family. Where else do you see the rich eating with the poor, the young with the old, even political differences are laid aside because we are united in Christ. The goal of the church is not for us to all look alike or think alike. The goal and mission of the church is to live like Jesus did, to declare the kingdom of God is at hand. It was perhaps an understatement in this passage when Paul had said that he heard that there had been division among them. He had heard there had been fighting. I don't know any family that doesn't have fighting. I have three kids, and so I know that families fight. They were even fighting this morning back there. Maybe some of you saw it. They don't always get along. In fact, I sometimes, it gets frustrating. Why can't they all just get along? And I feel like that's what Paul's getting at here. Why can't you all just get along? Why is there a division among you? I had a pastor who used to make a joke. He would say that you could bring two Nazarenes into the room and you would have five different opinions. And I think it, it gets to this thing that if there are disagreements, it's normal for there to be disagreements and diversity. And I don't know how this message is speaking to you today, but I want to read through this passage one more time. This time, I want to read through the passage in another version. It's the message version of the Bible. It's a paraphrase. And if you want, I invite you to close your eyes to imagine that these words are being spoken to us, to our church here and now. The Apostle Paul, he says, I have serious concerns to bring up with you. My friends, using the authority of Jesus, our master, I put it as urgently as I can, you must get along with each other. You must learn to be considerate of one another, cultivating a common, a life in common. I bring this up because someone from Chloe's family brought me the most disturbing report to my attention, that you're fighting among yourselves. I tell you exactly what I was told. You're picking sides. You're going around saying, I am on Paul's side. I am on Apollos' side. Peter is my man, or I am in the Messiah group. I ask you, has the Messiah been chopped up into little pieces so that we can have a relic all our own? Was Paul crucified for you? Was a single one of you baptized in Paul's name? I was not involved with any of your baptisms. If I'm getting this report, I am sure glad that I wasn't. At least no one can go around saying he was baptized in my name. God didn't send me out to collect the following for myself, but to preach the message of what he has done, collecting a following for him. And he didn't send me out to do it with a lot of fancy rhetoric of my own, lest the powerful actions at the center of Christ on the cross be trivialized into mere words. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Thanks be to God. May we not trivialize God's sacrifice, Christ's sacrifice on the cross. Christ died 
for you. Christ died for you. Christ died for you. We belong to Christ. We don't belong to a pastor or a leader or a group. We belong to Christ. We belong to the church. May we all get along with each other. Even in the midst of our differences, may we not be divided. It's okay to have differences among us. It's okay that there are differences of opinions and culture and ways of doing things. Differences are good. It makes us unique. I think it's good that we're not all the same because then I think the world would be kind of boring. If we were all the same, differences should be embraced and celebrated, but may our differences not divide us. Division makes us forget that we belong to the family of God. We are all brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to close in prayer today, and I want to invite the worship team to come forward. But I love that psalm that Lori read this morning. It said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Lord, we thank you for being that foundation, for being that rock, for being our leader, that even when things change. When leaders come and leaders go, I thank you for being the steady guide that leads us, that even though there was a pastoral transition, that you're still leading us, that you're growing us, both in numbers, but also inside our hearts, that we're growing in maturity and love, and that we are growing to be more like you, Lord. I thank you for being that shepherd, for guiding us, Lord, and I pray that you will be with each person here as you speak to them individually, Lord. Whatever it is you are laying on their heart, Lord, I pray that you will continue to speak to them with clarity, that they will know what next step they should take for you or with you, Lord. I pray that you will be with these people, that you will bless them throughout this week. And Lord, I thank you for all that you are doing as we come to you and worship with one more song, Lord. I give you all the praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen.